Now, many people say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't science rapidly approaching a complete explanation of nature? And in fact, Stephen Hawking's latest book, which is called The Grand Design, um, came out very recently, and his publicist and his co-author made a big deal about saying there's no God in this book. Hawking's was very famous in an earlier book for having mentioned something about knowing the mind of God. And he and his co-author wanted to make it clear that's not in this book. And a summary of this from one of the publicity websites is there's nothing special about our universe that needs explaining for why gravity or electromagnetic forces have their strength or values which allowed life to evolve. We got the universe we got. And in this view, the universe blasted itself into existence spontaneously, following the rules of M theory, which is another name for string theory, to create physical laws that we call gravity, magnetism, and so forth, and all of this happened purely by chance. Now, I'm not a physicist or a cosmologist, so I'm certainly not going to argue with Stephen Hawking, but to me, the interesting thing about that is his statement, and that is that there are rules of nature that allow the spontaneous creation of multiple independent universes, including ours, and therefore there's no particular significance to the universe in which we happen to live. Now, the interesting thing about that is certainly not all cosmologists agree. This is an article that appeared in the New York Times, an op-ed piece a couple years ago, by another cosmologist named Paul Davies. And the title is Taking Science on Faith. And he recounts the fact that as a young physics student, he used to torture, pester, his teachers with this question. And the question is, where do the laws of physics come from? And as he recounts it, the most frequent response that he got from his professors was, go away, kid, you bother me. There was another response. And the other response was, we're scientists. It's our job to figure out what the laws are, not to ask why they got there in the first place. But inevitably, he couldn't get a straight answer to where do the laws of physics come from. And it bothered him because he thought they have to come from somewhere. And his insight is this, and that is something outside of nature is required to explain the laws of nature. Now, I want to warn you, Davies is not a theist. He is not a believer in God. But nonetheless, he says there has to be something outside of nature to explain it. And the way he put it in this column was very nice. Science actually has its own faith-based belief system. All science proceeds on the assumption that nature is orderly, it is ordered in a rational and an intelligible way. And what that means is that religion and science are both founded on faith, and that is on the belief of something outside the universe, like an unexplained God or an unexplained set of physical laws, and maybe even an ensemble of unseen universes. For that reason, both monotheistic religion and orthodox science, both of them, fail to provide a complete account of physical existence. And I agree with Davies on that point. So here's the question, because we're talking about truth outside the material realm. Do any of us, as an ordinary matter of procedure, and not talking about the primitive circuits in our brain, do we ever seek truth outside material science? And my answer to that is, of course we do. We seek, for example, the kind of truth of a system we call justice. We seek justice without being able to define very often in empirical scientific terms what justice is. But we think as a people that we can know it and find it and set up institutions to achieve it. Now, this is not the only one. We also think there is such a thing as beauty. And if we did not think that there was such a thing as beauty, then the positions in the museums in this great city would be randomly occupied by things that people happen to paint, as opposed to historic and striking works of art. And since Dr. Helfand and I share a commonality that most of you are probably not aware of, we're both married to artists, I think we can both argue that the sense of artistic beauty is for real. There's also the notion of a sense of morality. And that is even people who reject the notion of theism think that there is a sense of morality to things. The, the most cogent and piercing arguments against organized institutional religion I have heard are from people who invoke a sense that what organized religion does to the human spirit is immoral, and therefore they too invoke morality even though they don't derive that morality from religion. Morality is not something that is material. It is outside the material realm. Do we think it's real? We sure do. And lastly, and this may come as a surprise to a few of you in the audience, mathematics. We think of mathematics as being material in part because it's useful in the material world, but the reality is mathematics is something invented by the human mind that is occasionally useful in modeling what happens in nature. 
And to me, the best example of that is a system of mathematics that I'm sure many of you are familiar with known as imaginary numbers. The basis of imaginary numbers is a constant called i, lowercase i, and i is the square root of negative 1. Now, all of you in this room will know that when you square any number, you always get a positive. So the notion that there could be a square root of a negative number is ridiculous. But it turns out that if you take that as an assumption, that this imaginary number exists, you can actually construct a logical system based on it that has no basis in physical or material reality. And as it turns out, because I occasionally do Fourier transform analysis of image using, using electron diffraction and high resolution electron microscopy, it turns out that imaginary numbers are actually useful in unraveling the details of some of these images in a very interesting way. Not material, but still useful and valid. So, do we ever seek truth outside of material science? The answer is, of course we do, in all the ways that I have just described. Does that mean that our search for truth outside of this is just whatever we want it to be? In other words, justice is whatever I think it is. Faith is whatever I think it is. Morality is whatever I think it is. The answer is, I don't think so. I think when we search for truth in a non-material realm, we have to be constrained by material reality, which is to say by science. So does that mean our search should be unconstrained? No, double negative. Sorry about that for my high school English teacher. Lastly, we cannot prove or disprove the existence of a non-material realm to sort of follow the title of tonight's, uh, tonight's session. But we can require that anything we think about in the non-material world demonstrate consistency and compatibility with scientific knowledge. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.